Hello and g'day. Today I'm going to show you how to do a DIY rust and grunge tape. Now this is a sample piece that I'm going to show you. It's a very wide piece of cello tape. So this is just ordinary sticky tape. Doesn't matter if you call it cello tape or sticky tape. Just clear tape. Can be that wide or that wide. Doesn't matter. It can even be this wide. Just a very narrow tape. It doesn't matter. You can make it for, you know, the even more narrow, just your little tape, like a washi tape. So this is what it actually does become. It's a faux washi tape. So it doesn't matter. I'm making it wider because for me it's easier and I can use it on tags. I can use this whole piece or I can cut it into strips. I was inspired to make this because I saw a video by Nick the Booksmith. She done a demonstration on how she, she made it using the narrow tape in a few different colorways and I was looking for something for my next video and this is a perfect technique to show you now in preparation for my next video. So we're going to do it a few ways. I've got this little demo here as well. I've done it on some clear photo corners and I've also done it on some cardboard corners these clear photo corners here have got a stick on back. You can get these in clear or white. This method will work on both. I'm using clear today. I'll show you how I made these when I get to that section. So we'll clear this away and we'll get started. What you'll need is a non-stick surface. And I like to put a piece of white paper behind it so I can see what I'm doing. If you haven't got any non-stick surface, just use a protector, a sheet protector. This is a, a backing of a piece of contact paper. Because we're junk journalists, we don't throw anything away. I kept this from a project I'd done a long time ago. So this shiny side where I've taken the contact paper off is perfect for this method. So if you haven't got any contact paper you can use a protective sheet like this or you can use a laminated sheet. So today I'm going to use the the backing sheet of my contact paper. I'm just going to tape it down to my work surface. I've already put one strip of my tape here. I've put a narrow strip which is still quite wide. This is what you, we call here in Australia magic tape. So we've got the clear sticky tape and we've got the magic tape. The clear is see-through. The magic tape when you put it on a piece of paper it actually disappears. I find when I use this method using the clear tape here, it's a bit shiny. See here how it's a bit shiny? So if you use the magic tape, you won't get that shiny finish. But you only get that shiny finish when you, you know, put it under lights like I've got here. It's not so shiny when you're not, you know, moving it around under camera lights. Now I'm going to wear gloves because I'm working with alcohol ink. So you'll need some cotton balls and you'll need some alcohol ink. It doesn't matter whether you use Tim Holtz or whether you use the Pinata. It doesn't matter, just as long as you've got an alcohol ink. So I'm going to use a few different colours. I've got hazelnut, terracotta and rust. And I've also got some butterscotch, espresso, some the currant, I'm not sure if I'll use that. 
and I've even got a like a Copic marker but in the Kaser Fusion in a little oh, it's like a a bluish color to bring in a bit of patina that's even if we want to it's up to you if you want to bring in any patina or if you just want to go the reds and the browns so if you've got any red ink bring that in too that's a burrow brown there's just so many colors that you can bring in all right we'll get started with putting down your base color uh, it all always depends on what color you can get as many colors as you like like this one here i've put tons of colors because i just had time to sit there and experiment so it just depends on what you want to achieve so we'll try and make this one a little simpler and we won't put too many colors i'm just going to splash out some rust Some butterscotch and some espresso brown I even like to use a teeny weeny little bit of black in mine as well and I'll start off with those colors these cotton balls are really poor quality so i find that they leave a bit of hair around the place now i've got quite a bit of alcohol ink here but i've got the fire going so i find that it dries pretty quickly in here so once i've got this spread out and dab all i do is dab 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 and then I try and ball this back up in my fingers and dab again and see how the alcohol ink has started to just do its own thing and spread out I find when it starts to dry I can actually come back over and do it again you can leave it like that if you want a you know a separated look like that and just use it with that type of colorway for your you know your faux washi tape or you can come back in again and start patting over it as it's drying and get even smaller separation dots and that'll only happen as it's close to drying it won't happen when it's really really wet and see how it's moved again so I just wait a little bit longer and I'll come over it again because I like the little small dots and I'm keeping that in a ball because that those hairs will come off if I don't so if you've got cotton balls that you know leave the hairs behind just keep smoothing them out see how you get a very interesting pattern that's just with two colors now you can you can spray over the top with isopropyl alcohol and that will separate this even more Well, that's pretty dry now so it's not going to do too much more so I can pat it and all I'll do is leave hairs behind so that's pretty much that color done I could easily come in and put some more brown over the top but I'm just going to let that dry a little bit more and I'm going to come in now and I'm going to do this magic tape piece here you'll see it when I start working on it I'm going to use a hazelnut and get a different color and I might even put some terracotta in there so I get a little bit more of an orangey ready color 
get some more happening there. You don't want too much because it's very narrow this piece and some rust and I'll see what that looks like before I go in and put some dark brown over the top. I'm still using the same piece of cotton ball. See as it dries I can come back and pat over it and get another pattern as well. I think that'll look pretty cool with some darker brown over the top. But that's given me another colorway, two entirely different colors just by adding butterscotch and terracotta. I might see if I can, this is chili pepper, I'll see if I can get a bit of red in there and get a, a really more rusty color. And I'll do that on this strip of clear cello tape. This red is quite deep. So it might not quite be the right color to, to achieve rust anyway. But let's see. It's all experimental. Once you know what colors you like, you just stick with them. But I do like to experiment because I don't, I don't mind having a few different colors. And if you've got too much red, all we can do is come back over later and put some more brown on it because this red is quite dominant. So this time I'm not going to pat too, too much. And I might just come back in on this one with the residual color and add it to it. Now it's only sticky tape. So, you know, like, okay, we don't want to waste our alcohol inks, but see what's happened to this one now. I've come back in and just used the residual ink off that. It's changed it heaps. But I do like that with a bit more brown on it. And I could always add some, so a little bit of the red in this one as well. See, you can, you can achieve whatever you want. So I'm going to let that dry just a little bit more before I, I throw some more brown on it. Now I'm not going to put the brown directly onto my tape either. I'm, I'm going to add it by putting it on here so I can get that, keep that stipple effect. If I, I'll just show you something. If I add it to here, it's going to separate on, on there. It's going to start moving things around and getting a totally different, see how it gets a, a darker border? You can certainly do it that way if you like, but you get a lot of ink on there. And if you like that, you can do it that way. And it works okay. But see here how I didn't pour it straight on there and I'm getting a little more control over my pattern and I'm getting some nice small circles. They are called something, but I'm not sure what they're called. So I can just smooth out my fluffy bits again. Put some ink directly on there. You can pat it off on the side first if you want. It does dry pretty quickly. And just come back in over the top and just add it where you want the color to be. Okay, so see the difference pouring it straight on the tape to putting it on here first. So it really depends on how you want it. Now I'm going to do that because I need it all to match. So it's moving around and doing its own thing and separating there. Okay. I can do the same on this one. I can either control it by coming in and doing small pieces here and there. You'll see it as I move my hand away. I'm sorry I can't do this any other way.
Now it's starting to do its own thing separating. I can come back over the top and push it on again. I'm pushing a little bit harder this time and look at that. It's just like magic. It'll give you another totally different pattern again. Changing again, starting to do that separation. I can come back over again while it's drying. And it go, it's just gone darker and given me those smaller patterns. I can add to that one again. Now see the red in it that I first put in it? It's just settled right down and it's just in the background now. So I'm pretty happy with that. I want to put some more brown over the top of here. So this is the espresso. And you could just keep going and going and going over the hours. If you leave this for an hour or, you know, it doesn't need to be an hour, but just leave it for a little while and come back, you get this really nice, small, textured patterns. And I, I like it to be small because when I cut it into strips or put it on what it is I want to put it on, it looks really cool. All right, so I don't want any alcohol to go on these two tapes. I'm just going to shield that a little bit because I only want to sort of give this a short spray on this bit here. So I'm just going to go ch -ch -ch like that on here. And I'm doing it about a foot away from a high. And see right before your eyes. It's starting to break up that pattern randomly. Where I've put the isopropyl alcohol, these little clear dots here, what will happen when I use this tape, if I put this on tea dyed paper, where those white dots are, you'll see the tea dyed paper behind it. It looks really cool. Okay, I'll just clear this up and I'll show you how to do the photo corners. They're just like little stickers and they work like this. So how they work is you just slip that in there and they peel off and they've got a sticky back. So you just put one on each corner and then glue it in your page or stick it in your page. All you do is exactly the same. You tape your, your clear corners or your white and just hold that down. Just make it fairly, fairly tight, you know, not too tight because just so it's laying flat. And I'll get some yellow down on these little strips. And I'm, I'm concentrating on putting the colour at the top. I'm going random again. And I'll now pat some colour into that. I like doing these corners because they turn out pretty good. I, th I think they're probably a little bit easier than the um, sticky tape strips. But I don't know. You try them and you tell me. To do the black, I'm not going to put it directly on my corners I'm going to put some off just so I can control it a bit better to start me off and just see whether or not I even like it which I do now I'll go in and put more so you don't have to directly put it on to your work you can pat off your work and then bring it in so there you are. I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to make too many changes to these colors I'm pretty happy with this color Then these ones here, they're not stickers, they're just corners, they're just pieces of cardboard cut out like this. I've got a piece of 300 GSM cardboard. Depending on what size you want, if you want a big corner like this one, just cut out a two inch square. So you just cut a strip off the top of your, your card piece like that and then cut two inches in a square and then cut diagonal across your square to end up with four individual pieces. 
right? So that'll make four large corner pieces. These would work well to put on a cover of a journal. If you want something smaller, like to fit this size, these are one inch squares. So that is this one. So just draw a line across the, the bottom of your, your card stock and then each inch apart and then cut a diagonal. So you're left with these smaller ones. So you just cut one across. If you want really tiny, tiny ones, just cut across that way as well. And you'll get four tiny ones. But for this one, I'll do the demonstration with this half of a one inch square, all right, which is 2.5 centimeters. What I suggest that you do though is color them in your strip and then cut them into these. Because it's going to be much easier than cutting them first and then coloring these individual little triangles. Same thing, just lay your color down exactly the way we done the first demonstration on the tape and then finish them off by cutting them out. I've got lots of ideas that I'll be showing you on how to use all of these techniques with this tape to make some steampunk ephemera if you like or some bits and pieces for your steampunk themed journal or tags or whatever it is that you want to do. So thanks a lot Nick for the idea to be able to grunge up our own tape at home. I'm Donna, thanks for watching and bye for now.